Imagine you are designing a system wherein users will subscribe to your products or services, such as YouTube or Netflix, where users will pay you on a monthly or annual basis. Now, in order to design a system like that, you obviously need a database wherein you'll store information such as if the user has subscribed to your service, if so, what's the renewal date, what are the charges you'll be charging the users, and so on and so forth. Now, typically, companies use third-party services to charge their users or to process payments, typically using PayPal or Stripe as third-party services, wherein they charge your debit card or credit card. Now, one way to integrate third-party services such as PayPal or Stripe is to connect them with your database directly. But your database will have a lot of sensitive information and for obvious security concerns, you don't want any third-party services to connect directly with your database. And for that reason, typically companies have a service or an API in the middle, which is responsible to take calls from the third-party services, act as a middleman, and communicate the information back and forth from the database to the third-party service or from the third-party service to the database. As you can imagine, this service in the middle is a critical part of your business. It is the one which is interacting with the database and also charging your customers by processing the payments using the third-party services. And hence, you don't want this machine to fail. In this case, we have just one machine in the middle acting as the intermediary between the third-party services to charge your customers and the database. And hence, we need to introduce redundancy in order to ensure in situations when one machine fails, the other one picks up. So let's introduce the redundancy of say five servers. Now, one of the problems you need to tackle when introducing redundancy is to make sure you don't have duplicate requests Imagine you are charging your customer twice and that would be really bad for your business. And so you need to ensure that only one of the servers is processing the request at a time. And that one chosen server is called leader. And so in this case, one server will be elected as a leader and the remaining four servers will be on standby and also called as followers. It sounds trivial when it comes to choosing or electing a leader, but this is one of the very difficult problems in computer science, especially when it comes to distributed systems. Computer scientists have developed consensus algorithms which take care of electing the leader. Because just imagine what happens if in a distributed system there is a network partition or failure of connectivity. One system can suddenly go down and then remaining other systems need to figure out, talk to each other and elect a leader given that there could be an additional network partition. And hence, computer scientists have developed consensus algorithms which take care of situations like this. These consensus algorithms are not really easy from software engineering standpoint. In fact, they are highly complex mathematically. Paxos and Raft are two such consensus algorithms developed by computer scientists. However, in field of software, we don't really implement them directly. In fact, there are services such as Zookeeper or etcd which eventually implement Paxos and Raft and then later we use or integrate them into our systems. For example, Uber uses Zookeeper for all their leader election needs. Zookeeper uses another consensus protocol known as Zap, just like etcd which uses Raft as its consensus protocol. Now for system design interviews, you don't really need to know Zookeeper or etcd in depth. Just know that these tools are exist. But most importantly, what you need to understand is leader election is an important problem in a distributed system. In terms of use cases, it's a very common problem when we scale applications in wide variety of domains, be it transaction management in banking systems or, or auto scaling of an application in cloud, be it distributed data structures when you are sharding or any kind of cluster management it requires a flavor of leader election. And with that, I hope you got a high level understanding of how leader election works in a distributed system. That's all you need to know when it comes to system design interviews.